In this video, I'll show you how I apply the pendulum shading technique. I've used this technique to tattoo various pieces and it's my absolute specialty. I'll demonstrate the needles I use and tattoo an explanation of this design for you. For this video, I'm using four different shades of gray. I've already prepared the stencil. Just a quick dry with a blow dryer and we're ready to start. Using the lightest shade of gray, I'll lay down some gray lines to guide me later. However, as we're focusing on the pendulum shading technique, I'll speed up the process. To shade the slightly larger areas, I'm using a nine Magnum soft edge needle. It's important that the needle has rounded edges. This is crucial for creating smooth transitions while shading. I've recently switched to new needles and what's cool about them is that they have these grooves at the front of the module giving me a much better grip while tattooing. I'll include links to all the needles I use in the video description. If you purchase them through my link, you can support me, allowing us to continue producing such videos. To work precisely, the needle should protrude approximately 1.5 millimeters from the needle module. In theory, the technique involves a uniform pendulum movement in both directions. The line represents the skin. With my free hand, I stretch the skin to ensure precise work. The needle depth for all needles ranges between 0.5 and 1.5 millimeters depending on the body area and skin type. Now I'll quickly show you the grayscale tones and how to create mid-tones. Though I only use four ink caps, I can create seven gray tones. As you can see, I mix the intermediate tones directly in my needle module. It is extremely important to know what each shade of gray looks like. I would be very happy if you subscribe to my channel. I put a lot of time and love into this content. Thank you very much for the support. As you can see, I hold the needle slightly sideways to hide the needle structure. This isn't always feasible, but when possible, I do it. Now I'm mixing the darkest mid-tone in the needle module. It's also important to note that when you mix a mid-tone in the needle module, you should dip the needle into both colors for approximately the same amount of time. Now, we'll tattoo the pure black using the same technique as before, just much darker. So, back to the design. I'll begin here with the second lightest shade of gray. I'll edit out the wiping off of the color to give us more time for the tattoo process and not unnecessarily prolong the video. The advantage of this technique is that it allows tattooing in both directions, forward and backward simultaneously, making it twice as fast as, for example, whip shading, where you move the needle in only one direction. However, it requires more practice because of the faster pace. In the first pass, I shade the large areas only with the big magnum needle, reserving finer shading for later with a thinner needle. It's crucial to make even movements because any mistake becomes immediately visible. It's also important to note that artificial skin doesn't absorb color as well, requiring more passes over the same area. On real skin, one must be careful not to overwork the area. As you can see, I work very cautiously here and it requires endurance. Additionally, you can discern the depth of my needle based on the sound. These techniques are challenging to explain as they heavily rely on feeling. It takes practice and perseverance. I would recommend getting silicone skin and trying it out. Even if the design doesn't look exactly as I intend it to at this stage, I always keep in mind that this is just the first pass and try to focus on it. This pass is essential for setting the shadows and not for achieving a realistic touch. Since this area is small, I only use the magnum on the easily accessible spots. This small area prompts me to adapt the technique to the design using curved whip movements. As color absorption is slower on artificial skin or larger designs, I also employ a cross shading motion with the needle in another direction, aiming to blend the needle structure. On real skin, for such a small design, the color would already be perfect after the first pass, resulting in a seamless, beautiful shading. 
Since this video aims to explain the technique, I skip some sections, but don't worry, next week, a real-time tattoo video of this design will be released. In this video, I will also display the various shades of gray in the bottom left corner so that you can replicate it one-to-one -one while tattooing. Due to my extensive experience as a tattoo artist, I find it easier to work with the magnum needle near the edges. However, please remember that this pass is solely meant to set the shadows correctly. If an area seems too small for the large magnum, I leave it out and address it later with a thinner needle. Stay relaxed and continue with the larger areas. As you can see here, I hold the magnum needle sideways for precise work on thin areas and try not to tattoo beyond the gray lines. Logically, the whip movement is longer for bigger areas, thus keeping the needle in the skin for a longer duration. I work the color into the skin with even movement. It's genuinely challenging for me to explain this complex topic because it's primarily about feeling, something learned over the years. However, I'm doing my best to convey it to you. When I began with realistic designs, I was my own biggest opponent. I stressed too much, especially because other tattoo artists were faster. The client sitting next to you waiting can add pressure. Ultimately, it's a mental game. And over the years, I've learned that one must take their time because it's a piece of art that lasts forever. A while back, a renowned tattoo artist gave me a great tip. He said he always starts with the less interesting parts of a tattoo project. So even if concentration wanes, he remains motivated. That truly inspired me. So that was the first pass and now we bring the design to life. For the next step, I'll use a 7 round liner 0.3 millimeters. In this pass, I aim to complete the design. Initially, some areas may seem too dark, but I trust the reference and strive to replicate it accurately. Even with the thin needle, I employ the pendulum shading technique, which is achievable with any needle. When I tattooed my first significant realistic design, I was immensely proud. I showed it to my sister, who is a very skilled tattoo artist, and she was dissatisfied with my work. I wondered what I did wrong. She pointed out that I hadn't cleanly worked the edges on that design, and that critique stayed with me. I completely changed my approach, and now focus on creating clean edges with thinner needles. There's a fundamental rule for needle adjustment. If too much ink falls on the skin, I let the needle protrude further from the module to minimize ink droplets providing better control. If too little ink emerges, I adjust the needle to protrude less from the module. When shading with a round liner needle, I personally prefer a size no smaller than a seven round liner. I can shade with a smaller needle, but I find it makes the needle structure visible, and we aim for soft shading. As you can see here, the design is starting to take on a realistic character at the top, and we're working our way down. Here, 
I aim to add dark line accents and bring contrast to the design. Since a realistic design typically has very few thick lines, they should be used sparingly. Though they are few, they are crucial for the realistic look. As you might have noticed, when working on the edge, I always keep the needle facing toward the design as the color is inserted beneath the skin, creating a sharper edge. Some tattoo artists have asked me why I share my knowledge here, and I've asked myself the same question. For me, it's incredibly gratifying to see that I can help people pursuing their dreams. It's because of such individuals who shared their knowledge with me that I am where I am today, and that's why I'll continue to share my knowledge. Feel free to tell me what you think about it in the comments. Good luck on your journey.